Hi everybody, Dr. Aulis here. In this short video, we're gonna talk about the two kinds of sensory information that you can collect, and we'll also talk about the ways that sensory receptors are classified in the body. So let's start with a brief reminder of what sensations are. When we detect things that are happening in our external environment or our internal environment, we call what we detect sensations. And there are two main types of sensations that you are constantly collecting. The first type of sensations are what we call somatic sensations. And there's a lot of different kinds of somatic sensations, things like touch sensations or temperature, itching, pain. Somatic sensations are our general senses. And these are collected throughout the body in a variety of different places. A friendly reminder for us that all of this kind of information, this somatic sensory information, is all going to go to the primary somatic sensory cortex. I want you to underline, highlight, star this. The primary somatic sensory cortex is the place where we have the sensory homunculus, that weird map. So all of my general sensory information from touch, vibration, temperature, itch and pain, all of this kind of information is all sent to the same place in the parietal lobe, to that sensory homunculus. But remember that we also collect other information that we call the special senses. So special sensory information is things like light, sound, chemicals, Collecting this kind of information is the work of our special sensory organs, and these are things that are located in and around the head. So when I'm talking about special sensory information, remember that this kind of information each had its own special place in the brain to be processed. So in the occipital lobe, the very back of the brain, this is where I'm gonna process visual information, light. In the temporal lobe, I have my, my centers for audit, auditory sensations, the process of hearing. Uh, when I look into the insula, that's where I, I do the process of tasting or smelling here in the temporal lobe. Both taste and smell are actually the detection of chemicals. So big picture, when we talk about senses, we have a lot of different somatic sensory information that we collect and very specific special sensory information as well. For us to be able to detect sensory information, we need to use specific receptors. So there are multiple different ways to classify these receptors. Let's go through them one by one. The first way that I can classify a receptor is based on where it's collecting information from. So based on its location. The first kind of receptors I have based on location are external receptors. So these are things called exteroreceptors. They're detecting information from outside of the body, the external environment. A great place where we see a lot of exteroreceptors is in the skin. So if you remember way back to chapter number five when we talked about the skin, we mentioned that the skin has what are called free nerve endings little branches of nerves that are detecting things like pain or temperature in the outer part of your skin. Or just below that, we have what are called Merkel discs. These helped with light touch sensations. Or down a little bit lower, we had the Pacinian corpuscles that detected pressure. All of these sensations that are being detected uh, by each of these nervous structures are coming from outside the body. So external receptors collect information from outside of the body. The opposite of an external receptor is an intero receptor. And intero receptors are monitoring the internal environment of the body. So these are the kinds of receptors that are checking your stomach to see how full it is, or they're monitoring your heart rate. They're, they're keeping track of what's happening inside of your body inside your muscles, inside your joints. All of the receptors that we will talk about in this chapter here are either an exteroreceptor receptor or an enteroreceptor. receptor. So as you're considering classifying our different receptors, 
Keep in mind that everybody is either an exteroreceptor, detecting something from outside, or an interoreceptor, detecting something on the inside. The next way we can classify receptors is based on what they're detecting, so the type of stimuli that they're able to detect. When we talk about different types of receptors based on stimuli, there are many specific names that we use for these receptors. So let's start with photoreceptors. Photoreceptors are the kinds of receptors that we have in the retina of our eyes. Photoreceptors detect light waves. The speed at which the, or the light vibrates helps us to figure out what color we're looking at, the location the light comes from helps us to determine shapes. All of these are things that are detected by the photoreceptors. Photoreceptors detecting light. Thermoreceptors help to detect temperature. There are many thermoreceptors in your skin to help you monitor your external environment, but we also have several thermoreceptors embedded in parts of our brain, like the hypothalamus, to monitor your internal temperature. So when you have a fever, like Dr. Aulis has recently had, your thermoreceptors in the brain would detect that the internal temperature is really high. When we go outside and it's cold outside, the thermoreceptors in your skin would detect that sensation as well. We also have what are called mechanoreceptors. Mechanoreceptors are detecting mechanical sensations. So this is things like touch sensations or pressure, stretching inside your muscles or your ligaments, all of those kinds of mechanical things detected by these mechanoreceptors. When we talk about the senses of taste and smell, the type of receptors that help us with that are called chemoreceptors. Chemoreceptors detect chemicals. The last kind of receptor is what we call a nociceptor. Nociceptors are the type of receptor that specifically detect pain sensations. Now something I want you to write down close to pain is this note here. Pain is any other sensation that's too strong. Pain is any other sensation that's too strong. So if it's too hot or it's too cold, I will actually detect that as pain. If I've got too much pressure or too much stretching, I'll detect that as pain. If a light is too bright, I'll detect that as pain. So nociceptors detect very extreme levels of these other kinds of sensations that these other specific receptors are detecting. One final way that we can classify receptors is based on the structure of the receptor itself. Many of the receptors that we're using to detect sensory information, we're actually detecting it straight onto a neuron. So remember that the dendrites of my neurons were the receiving parts of my neurons. If I have uh, just a regular free nerve ending where I see all of my little dendrites branching, that's one example of directly connecting that, collecting that information. Sometimes we'll also protect those dendrites in a little capsule. This was things like my Pacinian corpuscle or my Meissner's corpuscle where we wrap those dendrites up in some, some lipids to keep them safe. Either of these, though, are examples of receptors that are already a neuron collecting that information to send it on. Compare that to what we use in a lot of our special senses, things like vision or hearing or taste. Before that kind of information gets to a neuron, we actually first detect these stimuli with specialized cells. Perhaps you've heard of some of these specialized cells before. This is things like rods and cones, uh, or things like hair cells. We'll talk a lot more about these specialized cells, but when we're not directly using a neuron to collect the sensory information, we're probably talking about special sensory information. Things like light, 
uh, hearing, um, chemicals that we're tasting, all of those detected with a separate cell before the neuron. One quick note that I want to point out, because it's been a minute since we talked about neuron structure, check out my neurons that I see here. I've got dendrites, one big long extension. I bypass my cell body and go straight down into my axon to talk to somebody else. Same thing down here. Here's my dendrites, my big long axon. I'm bypassing the cell body, going straight down. And I see the same thing over here. Remember when we talked about neurons that had this kind of structure, we called them unipolar. Unipolar meaning they have one extension off of your cell body. I told you that unipolar neurons are sensory neurons. So bringing together that, that unipolar thing, remember that this kind of neuron is really good at collecting information, but does not process it at all. It's gonna send it to the central nervous system for that processing. And that's true whether we detect directly with a neuron or whether we use a different cell to do that detecting first.